Greetings from Prudent Ecosystems. This is a brief guide on safety with electrical appliances at home and why an ELCB or an earth leakage circuit breaker is needed. This presentation is targeted at a general audience and hence some basic terms and concepts of electrical engineering are explained. We will look at the following topics. Some basics of electrical safety using a simple line tester understanding how electrical leakage takes place, the working principle of an ELCB, what causes an ELCB to trip, ELCB tripping during generator startup, troubleshooting tripping problems, and lastly testing for poor insulation. Let us begin with some basics of electrical safety. As compared to homes 30 years ago, Today, there is a much higher dependence on electrical power. Earlier, it would be just lights, fans, water heater, fridge and perhaps music system and a TV. Today, in addition to all these, we have washing machines, air conditioners, dishwashers, microwaves, induction ovens, internet devices, set-top boxes, mobiles and laptop chargers, etc. As there is a much higher dependence on electricity, most homes have a UPS, sometimes as small as 0.6 kVA, and many apartments also offer much heavier backup power generation using diesel generators with automatic switchover. While these are conveniences, they pose a fresh set of problems as far as tripping and appliance safety is concerned. Electricity has been around for decades, and perhaps it is a case of familiarity breeds contempt and we take electricity for granted. Accidents from people ignoring safety aspects of electricity are still reported, many of them fatal. Shown here is an earth leakage circuit breaker, an ELCB, which is also called a residual current circuit breaker or an RCCB. We will use the term ELCB. This ELCB is a safety device unheard of in homes decades ago, but is very common today. ELCBs are meant to prevent instances of shock and are very essential in homes. However, these devices are also prone to nuisance tripping, that is, the device trips often, apparently due to no reason. We will look at the ELCB and how it works and how to troubleshoot nuisance tripping. Let us look at a few preliminaries. Electrical power is distributed within homes as 230 volt AC through a 3-pin wall socket. Looking at the socket, the pin on the right is the live wire, most commonly called line, on phase. Making contact with this can be dangerous. The pin on the left is neutral, while the pin on the top is a safety connection to earth. Here is an example of how a simple appliance is wired. A voltage of 230 volts AC should appear at the line pin only when the switch is turned on. An important point is that the switch should be on the line, that is the red wire, and not on the neutral. There have been instances of some electricians carelessly connecting the switch on the neutral. If this is the case, then the line voltage would come to the appliance even when the switch is off and can be a hazard. Lastly, the earth wire should be connected to the metal body, say the bulb holder or lampshade. It is worth ensuring that the wiring has been done correctly. This verification can be done with a simple screwdriver-like instrument called the line tester. It is a low-cost device available in all electrical stores and worth purchasing. Let us take a minute to look at the tester. The line tester is a screwdriver but with a difference. The tip is conductive while the metal stem is insulated. The head is made of plastic with a small bulb inside. The cap and clip are made of metal. If the tip makes contact with the live point, the bulb will glow. In order for the bulb to glow, the circuit must be completed by touching the conductive cap at the top. This helps us check whether a high voltage is present at the contact point. In addition, it can show if the body of any equipment has turned live due to any wiring fault. Caution must be exercised that we do not touch the tip of the screwdriver. 
If the insulation on the stem is broken, it is best that the tester is replaced. Here is a simple use of the tester to check the power outlet. Insert the tester and let your finger make contact with the conductive cap as shown in the picture. When the switch is turned on, only the right hand side contact of the wall socket will make the bulb glow. If the left hand side makes the bulb glow, then this must be corrected. With the switch turned off, the tester should not glow. Check all these conditions. Let us now look at how the third pin, the earth pin, is used and how a simple fault develops in equipment. While the red and black wires, line and neutral respectively, will be connected to the inner electricals like motor, heater, electronics, etc. The earth pin is wired to make proper contact with the metal body of the appliance. The earth pin of all wall sockets inside the home will be connected to an earthing pit outside the home. The current flowing into the appliance is shown by a blue arrow. It flows into the line and returns from the neutral. In an AC or alternating current circuit, the current changes direction. For example, in India where our electric supply is 50 Hz, the current will change direction 50 times a second. This current flowing into the appliance is called the load current. For example, if the heater in the washing machine is 2 kW, that is 2000 Watt, then the current from 230 volts will be 2000 divided by 230 or 8.7 amps. The current from line and neutral will be exactly the same at 8.7 amps. It is this principle which is used in the construction of the ELCB. For safety, the earth line of every home should be connected to an earthing pit outside the home. Assume that over a period of some years during the life of the equipment, a fault develops and there is a stray contact between the body of the appliance and the live wire. If a person were to touch the body of the appliance, he or she would get a shock. When this happens, a small current passes through the human body. The current can be as small as 0.03 amps or 30 milliamps, and this would show up as a difference in current between the line and neutral. So if the appliance was drawing 8.7 amperes, the neutral current would be 8.67 amperes. An ELCB is able to detect a tiny difference in current between phase and neutral and responds by tripping the circuit. The reason is that if there is a difference in current between line and neutral, then it is likely that a person is getting a shock and hence tripping the circuit is necessary for safety reasons. The ELCB is designed to trip at a leakage value of 30 milliamps or 0.03 amperes because beyond this it can be dangerous for humans. It is important to note that the ELCB is not checking the absolute value of current in the line, that is 8.7 amps in this example. Hence quite often even a very low power appliance having a leakage could cause an ELCB to trip the power to the entire house. The ELCB is at the heart of protection against electrical shock. So let's look at the working principle of the ELCB. The working of an ELCB is easier understood with the analogy of a precision physical balance. In the physical balance, it doesn't matter whether you place 10 grams in both pans or 10 kilograms in both pans. What matters is the difference between the two pans, which makes the needle of the balance swing. Likewise, the ELCB is constantly checking the difference in the current between the line and the neutral. If this current difference exceeds 30 milliamperes, that is 0.03 amperes, it will trip because currents beyond this are dangerous for humans. However, some ELCBs are oversensitive and could trip with even half this current of 0.015 amperes. This is not a defect but simply due to manufacturing tolerances, as the standards still allow for this variation. It is like erring on the side of caution. The figure here shows how an ELCB will be wired into the distribution board. In this case, a three-phase incoming mains is shown, red, yellow and blue. 
A similar wiring exists for other phases. The MCB senses the line current, which was 8.7 amps in the above example. The MCB is meant to protect against any short circuit causing large amounts of current to flow from the line terminal. These have to be chosen depending on the type of load and anticipated load current. In contrast, the job of the LCB is to check for an imbalance of current between line and neutral. In the present case, the neutral doesn't pass through an MCB and is wired directly to the wall sockets. This method is lower in cost but has the disadvantage that by switching off the MCB, the wall sockets are not completely isolated. Note that in, in the case of a three-phase installation, the neutral will carry the sum of the currents in all three phases. A typical distribution board or junction box has an array of MCBs as well as the ELCB as shown in the picture. As shown previously, the wiring to the house first enters the ELCB and then is distributed to different loads, say in different rooms, through various MCBs. There can be many ways in which a fault occurs in equipment causing an ELCB to trip. Let us look at some common ones. Electrical heaters, including those within a washing machine or inside a convection oven, have an element which looks like a bent tube. Inside the bent tube is a fine wire which actually carries the current and causes heating. If the wire comes in contact with the tubing, it will also make electrical contact with the water or equipment and then to the person touching the water or the equipment. To prevent the wire from touching the tubing, it is held in place with a hard epoxy. This electrically insulates the wire from the tube and the body of the equipment. With aging, the insulation weakens and electrical current begins to flow through the body of the equipment and then to earth. At this stage, the ELCB will start tripping whenever this appliance is turned on. In the case of a washing machine, the heating would begin a few minutes after the wash cycle begins, when the water has been filled. If the tripping occurs at this time, it is a clear indication that it is the heater which has a fault. Needless to say, the heating element must be replaced as it is now a safety hazard and the ELCB has done its job by tripping. Another fault which is likely to occur is that within spike busters. These are small multi-plug distribution boxes. They have inbuilt protection for sensitive electronics within TVs, PCs, monitors, printers, etc. from spikes that is, high voltages of extremely short duration which can damage electronic components. Spike busters have line filters built from devices like capacitors and varistors connected between line, neutral and earth as shown. When the equipment is new, they will do the job by only working when there are high voltage spikes and not drawing any significant current during normal times. As the components age, they degrade and draw leakage current even during normal voltage, as shown by the red broken line. Eventually, these leakage currents can become large enough to cause an ELCB to trip. As spike busters are themselves forgotten to be part of domestic e equipment, they escape suspicion whenever there is tripping, but could well be the culprits. In homes and apartment complexes where diesel generators have been installed, it has been observed that during startup of generators, it is common to see ELCB stripping. Let us look at possible reasons for this. To understand the problems when generators start up, let us take an analogy of what happens when a car or a train which was stationary suddenly begins to move. There is an acceleration needed to overcome the inertia of the vehicle. The passenger in the car would feel a jerk in proportion to the acceleration but in the opposite direction. The larger the acceleration, the larger the jerk. Once the car is at a steady speed, there are no jerks experienced. Note that the jerk is minimized by the way in which the driver accelerates. Electrical devices also exhibit a similar inertia and have a tendency to draw more current when the device powers up. 
This is true of refrigerators, air conditioners, line filters, etc. In fact, even the old incandescent bulbs have this property. Electronic ballasts and CFLs will exhibit a higher current at startup too. If the entire house or an entire building is powered up all of a sudden, then there is a much larger rush of current adding up from many appliances and gadgets. This current is similar to the jerk felt by the passenger when first accelerating. Later, the current drops to its normal value. This is the reason why air conditioners and refrigerators have an inbuilt delay to start up. This prevents excessive heating if there is repeated power during turning off and on. When the main supply is cut off or fails, as happens often in Bangalore, and if a backup generator is present, it would take almost half a minute to start up. And during this time, all the currents would have dropped to zero. When the generator begins supplying the power, a high inrush current would flow. Accompanying the flow of inrush currents are also voltage spikes and possibly surges, depending on the diesel generator. It is similar to the jerky motion of a car by an unskilled driver. At this time, if any equipment has started exhibiting leakage currents, which are on the borderline of causing tripping, then there is a good chance that during the generator turn on, the ELCB would trip. Frequent tripping of an ELCB is not only a nuisance, but could actually be a sign that some equipment needs repair or perhaps the ELCB itself needs a replacement. Here are a few tips on troubleshooting. An important aspect of troubleshooting is to be able to observe a problem as it happens. Since the tripping of the ELCB can happen occasionally, example when generator switches on, it may be difficult for the technician to be present to view the problem. Moreover, not all homes will have a generator. However, it is possible to recreate the problem by generating a high inrush current. Shown here is a possible wiring of three phrases across a home. When the main switch is shut off, all three phases will be powered off. Wait for a few minutes before restoring the power. It would be good to keep all possible appliances plugged in and turned on. When the main switch is turned on, it will create a large rush of current and if there is a borderline case of leakage, it can induce the ELCB to trip. Let us assume that the ELCP indeed has tripped. We can go to the next step of troubleshooting. Now that we have recreated the problem, we need to determine which branch of the wiring has the fault. For example, in this figure, we need to find out whether the faulty appliance is in the kitchen or living room or bedroom. For this, we keep only one MCB on while turning off the rest and repeat the about test by switching off and on the main switch. Repeat the exercise by keeping only one MCB on. The MCB which when kept on can recreate the problem is supplying power to a section of the home which has the problematic appliance. Now that the section or room has been identified, unplug all appliances and plug them in one at a time while switching the mains off and on. Perhaps the appliances with heating elements could be the first suspects like kettles, washing machines, water heaters, convection ovens, etc. The next suspects could be spike busters or UPS. Lastly, look at outdoor installations which could have some rainwater inside. Lastly, if it seems inconclusive, that is no single appliance is consistently causing the tripping, then it could be the ELCB itself. This can be the case if the ELCB is very old and needs replacement. If you want to confirm that indeed a particular appliance is faulty and causing leakage, then there is an instrument available to do this called an insulation tester or a megger. A megger or a mega ohm meter can be used to check faulty insulation. 
it briefly applies a high voltage like 500 volts DC or 1000 volt DC. This can be used only to check appliances which have a 3 pin plug using the earth pin to connect to the metal body. The common steam iron is a good candidate. It has a heating element, a metal body with an earth pin connection and lastly water which can go into the wrong places. Important to note how the mega is to be connected. Both line and neutral inputs of the appliance must be shorted together and then connected on one probe of the mega. This is important. The other probe of the mega is connected to the earth pin. After this, the mega is activated by pressing its button. It should show a resistance of a few hundred kilo ohms or more. Ideally, a mega ohm or more. If it reads less than 10 kilo ohms, then the appliance could be faulty. Note that incorrect usage of a mega could damage the appliance. We do hope this information has been helpful. Please do write if you have any comments. Thank you.